Hey everyone, today I wanted to share how I've been integrating the latest model from OpenAI into my software development workflow and how it's been a total game changer. Now, I'm always looking for ways to optimize my work routine and boost productivity. Recently, I've been experimenting with GPT-4.0. After seeing all the videos where it actually has conversations with other human beings and it has significantly improved the volume and quality of work I get done. Let me walk you through some real situations and maybe give you an idea on how to integrate it in order to make your day-to-day -day job or tasks easier. First off, let's talk about code generation. The other day I was working on a feature that required a complex sorting algorithm. The data structures were a bit tricky, there was a dictionary with some objects in it, and also TypeScript, the language I had to write this in, was not my main language. The syntax was a bit strange to me, coming from C Sharp. Instantly realizing that writing this from scratch would take a lot of time, I described my requirements to ChatGPT, and it generated generated a code snippet that was nearly perfect. With just a few tweaks, I had exactly what I needed. What would have taken me an hour was done in minutes. This isn't just a one-off thing. I've used it for generating utility functions, handling edge cases, and even creating boilerplate code. Another big win was during a code review session. I had to review a colleague's pull request, and I was short on time. I decided to run the code through this AI to get some initial feedback. GPT-4.0 pointed out several potential improvements such as optimizing the time complexity of a loop using LinkU and suggesting better variable names for readability. This gave me a solid starting point and I could focus on more nuanced feedback instead of getting bogged down with minor issues. It made the review process much faster and more efficient. Context issues might sometimes arise if the modifications have a lot of external dependencies, but in other cases it might point out mistakes you might have totally missed. If you work in a corporation, you have to pay attention though, do not feed it internal code or pieces of business information, otherwise you may get in trouble. Some companies also buy GPT workspaces for their programmer employees, and in this deal the model won't train on any code they input there. Just ask your workplace if it has anything like this. A process I am sure many of you are familiar with and run from as fast as you can is writing detailed and clear documentation for features you or your team work on. Recently, I finished a PBI in the backlog and needed to document my API's endpoints. I provided GPT with some context about each endpoint and it generated comprehensive documentation that only required minor edits. This not only saved me a ton of time, but also ensured that the documentation was thorough and well structured. And all this time I saved could be invested in other things, like a side hustle or just going out for a walk and getting a fresh breath of air. There have also been many times when I encountered tricky bugs that I couldn't figure out. After spending a couple of hours with no success, I decided to describe the issue to this model. It suggested a few potential causes that I hadn't considered, multi-threading issues and out-of-scope variables. Following its advice, I was able to pinpoint the problem and fix it. Integrating it into my workflow was easier than I expected. I started using a VS Code extension that leverages GPT, making it seamless to get suggestions and generate code directly within my editor. If you are considering trying this out, I highly recommend starting with a small part of your workflow and gradually expanding its use as you get more comfortable. Of course, it's important to remember that while code generation models are powerful, they are not unfollowable. Always review and test the code it generates to ensure it meets your standards. I am only mentioning this because more often than not, it requires some tweaks for it to work properly on your specific use case. Think of it as an assistant that can enhance your productivity, but not a replacement for your expertise and judgment. Before I wrap up, I want to touch on a common concern, the fear of becoming overly reliant on AI and it replacing us. Like I mentioned before, 
where I found that using it for routine tasks actually frees up more of my time and mental energy for complex and creative aspects of software development. It's like having a supercharged assistant that handles the mundane, allowing me to focus on what really matters. But context issues and understanding the bigger picture are still issues it encounters. Sometimes even a simple task might not be understood properly from the get-go, so I wouldn't worry about it taking my actual job. If you've already started using GPT-4.0 in your workflow, let me know in the comments below how it's going, and if you have any questions or need tips on getting started, feel free to ask. Till next time, cheers and happy coding!